Okay, in this video, we're going to look at an example of an equilibrium and put to use the things we've derived up to this point. Now, given the title of this slide, Noxious Equilibrium Example, you could be forgiven to, for thinking that we were going to talk about uh, nitrogen oxides. Those are abbreviated NOx. It's a little chemist joke there. <laughs> okay, uh, instead, noxious in this case is about gases that smell really, really bad and are kind of poisonous. But it's an interesting reaction. So phosphorus pentachloride in equilibrium with phosphorus trichloride and chlorine gas. So the last one actually used as a chemical weapon in World War I. The other's uh, extremely unpleasant. This is one you'd want to do in a fume hood. But we're doing it in an, a thermodynamics example, so there will be no choking involved. Uh, the equilibrium constant, the pressure equilibrium constant, is defined as the product of the products raised the product of the pressure of the products. I guess we're using product two ways there. They're products of the reaction, and this is a multiplication, so there's a product. The product of the pressure of the products raised to their respective stoichiometry powers, but those are one in this instance, divided by the pressure of the reactant, there's only one reactant in this case, as measured at equilibrium. So if at the beginning you have one mole of PCl5 and you introduce it into a vessel, reaction will occur to some extent Xi. And at the end of that process, you will have one minus Xi moles of PCl5 left, and you'll have generated Xi moles of phosphorus trichloride and Xi moles of chlorine gas. And so the total moles in the system will be one minus E of PCl5 plus two, did I say E? Xi, sorry, I told you how much I like to say Xi plus two times Xi, right? One here and one here. So we'll have one plus Xi total moles. Now, if Xi subscript equilibrium is the extent at equilibrium, so we let it go for a while until concentrations are no longer changing, then at that point, the partial pressure of phosphorus trichloride and the partial pressure of chlorine gas will be equal to, however much of them is present at equilibrium, times the total pressure of the system divided by the total number of moles, right? So 1 plus C is the total amount, and there's C of either chlorine or PCl3, and so this is the partial character, right? That's what fraction of the total moles are these gases times the total pressure. And obviously, by, by exact analogy, the, the partial pressure of PCL5 is the total pressure times how much of PCL5 is there compared to how much there is total, right? And everything with an EQ subscript, because we've let it come to whatever extent it stops doing anything else. So Kp, then, is equal to, we're going to go up here, this P, which is defined by this, times this P, which is defined by this. So I get a total pressure squared. In the denominator, there will also come in a total pressure factor from PCL5. So I'll end up with a single pressure. And then meanwhile, C, if I look at this, it's this quantity, C equilibrium over 1 plus C equilibrium for the first one, times exactly the same quantity for the second one, all divided by 1 minus C divided by 1 plus C, I'll let you do the algebra to work out that, uh, that ratio, but it comes to be C squared divided by 1 minus C squared. And looking at that, you can get an idea that working out that ratio will involve a 1 plus times a 1 minus, and that gives you a 1 minus something squared. So it's not, it's not magic, it's just a little algebra. Okay, so uh, that's kind of a funny thing, right? The equilibrium constant, as it's written here, is supposed to depend only on temperature. And yet, the way I wrote it, it sure looks like it depends on the total pressure, doesn't it? So is that a paradox of some sort? Well, 
we did derive, the reason it depends only on pressure is we really did derive in uh, the last video that the equilibrium constant is the pressures as measured at the equilibrium point. That doesn't seem to uh, depend on anything other than temperature if you go back to that derivation. And so what must be true is if Kp is a constant at a fixed temperature, then if you change the total pressure, you're going to have to change the equilibrium extent of reaction, Xi, in order to maintain the value of Kp. So make this piece go up, this piece is going to have to go down in order to keep the equilibrium constant pressure. Maybe you've heard of that before. So let's do a little self-assessment. What's the name of the principle that states that the position of an equilibrium, that is the reaction extent, shifts in response to a change in the reaction conditions, in this case, a change in pressure? So this was probably the shortest self-assessment in the uh, course so far. Uh, it's Le Chatelier's principle. It's something one runs into very early on that reaction extent can shift in response to a change in conditions. And so here's a, the specific uh, details, if you like, of how the reaction we've been looking at thus far, phosphorus pentachloride going to phosphorus trichloride plus chlorine gas at 200 degrees Celsius, so we are going to keep it at a constant temperature, varies its reaction extent, Xi, as a function of pressure. And so what do we know, just, just looking at this? We've got two things on the right-hand side. We've got one thing on the left-hand side. So that suggests that as the pressure goes very, very, very high, we ought to prefer to only have one thing in the flask compared to two things in the flask. And sure enough, as we increase our pressure down here, the extent of reaction starts dropping, 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 and looks as though it will at some point go to zero, right? And we started with this as reactants. So extent of reaction zero means entirely reactants left. On the other hand, as we go to infinitely dilute, so that's like zero pressure, you certainly get a whole lot more entropy out of two things being in an infinite volume than out of only one thing being in an infinite volume. So you approach an extent of reaction of one for uh, the, the reaction extent at low pressure. So that seems to make sense. And this is just uh, you know, the actual equation describing how Kp is going to vary uh, as we, how extent is going to vary as we vary p in order to make this a constant. Okay, that is the specific example and an illustration of Le Chatelier's principle. Next, let's talk about actually determining equilibrium constants.